Uh, this is the wonderful Goshen High School Jazz Voices. I am Kristen Scully, the director. I have some of the best kids in the entire school. Biased, but we, we do. So we've been working really hard on this, and our spring concert is next week. There's one on Monday for the band and orchestra, and ours is on Wednesday, the 26th, which um, all the four choruses will be participating in that one. Um, we have three songs for you tonight. This is a jazz group, so they're all jazz oriented. We've got uh, I've Got the World on a String, a very popular jazz tune. So we like to do a mix of standards or something that's a little new or different. So this is one of the standards, if you will. It's a very difficult piece, and I'm not sure they're happy with me that I picked it. <coughs> but it's really good. It sounds so good. They just get nervous about it. So here we go. I've Got the World on a String.
so many faces that I know. I think most of you were in the play. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Good evening. I'd like to call to order a regular meeting of the Board of Education of the Goshen Central School District tonight, Monday, April 17th, 6.30 p.m. in the District Administration Building and also being live streamed through YouTube. Um, we just had the incredible jazz voices from Goshen High School come and perform. And if you missed it, I know that they are performing next week. I believe she said Wednesday night. Um, if not, I know that it's probably on the website or it was sent out. District calendar. District calendar. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of meditation. Can you please keep in your thoughts and prayers uh, the passing of Carol Swanwick, uh, school nurse at C.J. Hooker. She was the mother of Mary Kay Jankowski, who is a retired social worker at SAS as well. Um, and also William Kelly, father of Michael Kelly, social studies teacher at our high school. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next on the agenda is the president's report. Uh, just some quick things. I know I don't want to steal anybody's thunder, but congratulations to our Odyssey of the Mind teams. Um, and I think maybe Jason might be talking a little bit more about that. So I'll let you do that. Um, I can't help, and I have to say it, that Michael Lombardi was awarded the Eagle Scout Award this weekend, along with Tanner Conklin. And I was very honored to be invited and actually be there for you. Thank so congratulations. You. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Um, let's see. The uh, board candidates, and I could mention this later on too, um, did turn in uh, the paperwork today and the order of um, how they will be on the ballot will be announced at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Correct, Maureen? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, and I do want to give a special shout out to Mr. Tom Gilbert for helping in the parking lot as usual at Goshen High School, especially during the Invitational this past weekend. Good job, Tom. <laughs> That's all that I have. Um, next on the agenda is the Students' Representatives Report, Michael Lombardi. So at the high school for the past events, there was a successful college planning workshop, which was held at the high school on March 29th to inform and help and aid both parents and students on the path to college. The GHS mock trial team was named county champions. Their last debate took the win against Washingtonville High School on March 28th. GHS named the top six graduates and GHS Colin Ahern and Lauren Carroll both received the Humanities <laughs> Honors Award. Spring sports are in full effect. There have been a number of wins by the various gladiator teams, baseball, softball, cross, as well as individual medals for track events at the Cornwall Dragon Relays. The GHS track team hosted the Coliseum Classic Invitational this past Saturday, that as well as attended by 28 schools, 1,500 athletes. Unfortunately, that, the event made it halfway through before it got rained out. There will be another Invitational Meet this Wednesday weekend, Saturday, April 22nd, the Trotters Track Carnival, in which they are looking for volunteers. There is a Google form online that could be filled out. So now for upcoming events on April 19th and May 3rd, there will be the viewing of the documentary, If They Had Known, in the GHS Auditorium. It discusses the issues of accidental deaths due to mixing alcohol and prescription medication. The GHS Variety Show is tomorrow, April 18th. This event is always a fun one that showcases local talent, so come spend an evening and be entertained. The GHS Spring Concerts will be taking place on Monday, April 24th and Wednesday, April 26th. And there are a number of class fundraisers currently out there. Please check them out and support the organizations and students. A few are the Leo Club hosting superhero events on Friday, April 21st. The National Honor Society is hosting a candle sale. And the girls varsity team is hosting a parents night out on Friday, May 5th. A recent success event was the Easter Bunny at GHS for the class of 2024. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Next on the agenda is the legislative update. Uh, Mr. Tom Loftus. All right, our next Oxford meeting will be at the beginning of May. 
And so after that meeting, we'll have some more updates for everyone. Thanks, Tom. Next on the agenda is the superintendent's <coughs> report, Dr. Curtis Cruz. Thank you, Ms. Salty. So uh, finally, we have a budget presentation this evening that will detail for the board four different options for how to appropriate the funding that was a result of increasing the tax levy to 1% that was discussed during our last meeting. I had an opportunity to send this out to the board last week, but I'm gonna ask um, Ms. Van Pilt-Lamarin to now walk you through those four options and open it up for discussion so the board can have ample information to make a final decision on uh, where we need to go. So without further ado, Ms. Van Pilt-Lamarin, I'm gonna turn it over to you. So here's the timeline for where we are at this place in time. Um, tonight we'll adopt the final budget and approve the property tax report card. Submission of the property tax report card is due on Monday, April 24th. Previously, I had the 25th on here. I just wanted to point out that it is actually the 24th this year. And then our public budget hearing is slated for May 2nd with the annual budget vote on May 16th. Okay, so these there were four scenarios that um, were sent home on Friday to you to review, and I'm just going to go through each of those and point out some things. Scenario number one, we've taken an appropriated less fund balance based upon the amount of the 1% tax levy, and that tax levy comes out to $540,400. So then our appropriated fund balance dropped from $1,250,000 to $709,600, and we left the budget total the same as what has been presented for the last two months to the board, the non-instructional section and the instructional section, for a total budget of $88.9 million, more than that. So what this scenario does, it actually reduces our reliance on fund balance from uh, 1.250 to 709,000, and it allows us to have options of what to do with the difference. We could put it in a capital reserve and use that for future projects. Any questions on this one? So uh, scenario number two, here's where we're going to appropriate the same amount of fund balance that was appropriated for the 22-23 budget, which is $1,250,000. And the option is we could increase the budget by the $540,400. And this could allow for additional funds for capital projects or program enhancements in the budget. So the, rather than move the money into the capital reserve, it would be in the budget. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And now we have scenario number three. What this one proposes is, again, maintaining the same appropriated fund balance of $1.250 million, <clears throat> keeping the same budget that's been uh, presented in the last two months, but it decreases the state aid on the revenue side, and that almost comes out to the $547,000 that is supposed to be set aside for high-impact tutoring. So... We can do that, but there has not been final guidance on that because the budget has not been adopted by the state. So this would be um, unknown at this time, but it is an option if you wanted to do so. But it does not leave us you know, any fund balance or wiggle room for any budget increases. Um, okay. Last but not least, uh, this scenario actually gives us a more balanced approach so we've reduced the appropriated fund balance from $1,250,000 down to $900,000, which I've mentioned before is the amount that's been appropriated for the last 10 years that I can tell on the books. And so it brings us back down to a lower level. Uh, and the difference between the 900000 
and the $1.250 million um, could let us increase the budget for $190,400, allowing us to use those monies again for either capital project works with the general fund budget, so they'd be small projects, not necessarily a multi-million dollar project, um, or enhance our programs, the curriculum side, or a little bit of both. We could split the difference and put it in both places. So that's why we say it's a more balanced approach. It's spreading it around throughout your options. Any questions on any of those scenarios? <laughs> I'll just, oops. <laughs> there we go. And I just left the proposed budget as we've talked about over the past few presentations in here so you could see the difference, uh, non-instructional section and the instructional section. That's really all we have. We'll go back to the scenarios. So I, I just want to add in a, just a couple of comments again that Ms. Lamoran brought up. The state has not moved on budget approval. Unfortunately, it looks like they are actually going to pass another budget extender tomorrow to give themselves another week. Uh, again, it looks like the sticky wicket in Albany is bail reform. They have not had any conversations on state aid for schools that has been somewhat consistent, but until the final budget is adopted, we're not going to know that for certain. Uh, the the other piece just to point out is uh, some of these options that were presented to you give you some decision, if you will, regarding what you saw from facilities last week. If we wanted to appropriate any of the additional funding for small projects throughout the year, the other favorable option in reducing the fund balance is moving forward. Should we see increased costs? Should we see expenses continue to rise? Having a lower fund balance allows us to be able to meet that fund balance need in the subsequent budget in the subsequent year at the same time, should we not be able to generate that additional fund balance to be able to balance the budget in future years. So again, trying to point out some of the benefits, but happy to, to dialogue with the board, answer questions on, on any of these options. Ms. Lamer and I spent a lot of time on this at the end of uh, last week, trying to make good decisions on options to present to you and happy to, to answer any questions that could help you uh, arrive at a final decision. Any questions? Or do you need an answer? We need an answer this evening. We do. We, we need an answer one of these four options needs to uh, be the number that gets plugged into uh, for the board to adopt the budget tonight. Anyone have any concerns, questions, input? Just, a, I guess, more of a clarification. So in the scenarios where the fund budget is, is being reduced, um, and then there's an available increase in the budget, where does that fall into the line item for now, right? So if you ended up with scenario four, everyone said that makes sense, <clears throat> that budget increase of 190, 400, where does that go in the line item of the budget? So that would be part of the decision making as well. I put on there, um, it could be placed into a capital transfer project transfer, or we could put in the buildings and grounds budget, increase a section in there for doing some more work during the year on different things that need to be done that the facilities committee presented. Or we could also put it into a curriculum line to enhance programs for um, the curriculum side, or a little bit of both, uh, however you would want to do that. Uh, as far as a specific code for curriculum, uh, curriculum, or what? So just keep in mind, too, assuming that you want that balanced approach, some in facilities, and some in curriculum, some in staffing, as long as it is a similar code, once the budget, assuming the budget is approved, you then can transfer that money should you need to make a, a different decision in the future as well. You just can't take it from something like equipment to salary. So just to clarify for the board, you're looking for us to give you one of the scenarios, not necessarily telling you know, where to put it on the budget line at this point. We can have more conversations. About it. We would just need to know whether or not you want it to go specifically into like something like equipment or not, where you would like to see those funds appropriated. We don't need a specific line, just as long as we have a general idea of the use of funds. 
three part budget broken down by capital admin and programs. So I would want to know which side of those three options to put it in. You had mentioned that the fund budget in the past was 900 versus 1.25. Yeah. Now, when, when did that increase? In the 22 23 budget, this year's the current year's. And budget. then prior to that, it was 900. Yes. For 10 years, as far back as I could see, I didn't dig too much further back, but it seemed pretty consistent over the years. At and that would allow us to put more money in the capital reserve as well. That's right, yes. Right. Because mm -hmm. I know yeah. we have a big project and we're pulling a lot of money out of the capital reserve. Exactly. So we would have to put some money back in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, based on what we talked about last time around, um, with all the information and the very thorough, you know, BCS we received and all that feedback, it does seem like that's a very logical place to put it in the capital reserve for the forthcoming building needs. We have a lot of buildings with a lot of needs. And then again, if we find next year it needs to be pulled from there to another area of need, we, we can still do that if, if needed. And what we could do is put it into um, transfer to capital. And then we can also put it into the capital reserve at the end of the fiscal year next year. So if we find we have more than 190, say, for that scenario number four, and if we have extra fund balance left from underspending the budget or if we do get more state aid in for whatever reason, we can put that money into the capital reserve as well. So is everyone in agreement with scenario four? <laughs> I think that makes sense to me if it helps us preserve our capital reserve, save some money for available projects, and it kind of resets us back to that fund balance level we were prior to last year. I think that's the most logical to me. Yeah, I definitely agree. So what? Thank you. I really appreciate all your help. <laughs> Everything you need more answers, probably resolution. Yes. And show resolution. It's correct as it is in the event. Uh, well, the 12.2 and then you just need 89 million. Right. But do we still need two specified so, grants? So, as, long as, as, long as, as long as we're cleared to interim you know, grants for the facilities. So the total is, I thought it was the 88928, right? Eighty nine. Oh, I got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. It's okay. So I also just want to give some quick accolades to our Odyssey of the Mind program. Mr. Carter will be giving some greater detail, but two of our teams, Team Losi and Team Seligman, will be moving on to the world finals. Mr. Carter's already begun working with Mrs. Laskowski on all of the planning and preparation that takes place. It's an exciting time again to see such a pro program continue to succeed. We continue with uh, some great opportunities in our musical program. Uh, over the last few years, we've been able actually to start a small musical program at GIS. We'll have three presentations coming up of the Lion King Kids. Mrs. Valerie Nat has been working with a, a whole host of parent volunteers and actually two different casts of students. There'll be uh, an evening presentation on the 21st, two uh, matinee on the 22nd, an evening on the 22nd, and then another matinee on the 23rd. So good luck to all of our students and all of our parent volunteers. And finally, I want to say thank you to Michael for bringing up our top six. We did not announce their names. It is uh, six young women this year that have taken the spot of our top six graduates. Please to read their names. Isha Ramanathan, Hannah Fruling, Anna Loder, Rowan Myers, Serena Yudu, and Mia Colangelo. Mr. Uh, Panleone hosted a wonderful breakfast for them, and it was a great opportunity to start to hear about some of their plans. In fact, one of them talked, Mr. Panleon, to making a prank phone call home. She said, I don't think my parents have ever gotten a call from the principal. <laughs> and to hear that poor parent on the other side, what's the matter? 
So it was it was a fun morning to, to meet with them and to hear about their future plans, and it'll be great to, to see some things that come up for them before the end of the year. Congratulations to our top six graduates. With that, I will turn it back to you. Thank you. I have to just say congratulations to them as well, and I should have mentioned it before. So congratulations <laughs> to all of them. Uh, next on the agenda is the Assistant Superintendent for Business Report, Ms. Lorraine Van Tot Lamer. Thank you. Uh, so our internal audit is going to be kicking off soon on April 27th and 28th. Cooper Arias is going to be in the district to begin the risk assessment. After that, they'll have a draft report and we'll have the audit committee meet at that time when they're ready with the draft to review the findings of the risk assessment. And from there, you usually go on and pick which area for them to focus on for more detailed um, internal audit. So hopefully sometime in May or June at the latest, we'll be able to meet and go over this draft. Our financial reports this month are for the month of March. Uh, we have expenditures in the general fund that totaled $7.4 million. And for revenue, we received a lot of state aid. We always get our lump sum state aid payments in the end of March. It's the end of the fiscal year for the state. So we received general aid, $6.7 million. Lottery aid, $152,000. Excess cost aid, $1.4 million. Instructional materials aid, that's your textbook, uh, software, hardware, and library materials combined, that's $260,000. We also have got our return taxes from the county, and that came to $1.9 million. And I've been reporting on our interest earnings, and for this month, we earned $133,000. I expect that to book next month since we received this money in this month. So when I report in April. So our budget status report in the general fund shows our total expenditures through the end of March as $53 million or 63% of our total budget. And we've earned $76.2 million in revenue or 92.5% of our revenue projections through March. That's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum, Instruction, Personnel, and Technology Report, Mr. Jason Carter. Thank you, Mrs. Salty. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first, we'll begin with substitute teacher orientation. I've been working with Ms. Ricciardi, our personnel assistant, um, to get in touch with many of those who are interested in substitute teaching here in district through our OLAS applications online. Uh, she actually reached out via bulk email um, to, to gauge interest so that we have a better idea of who might attend. Um, we do intend to hold an orientation here in central office on May 1st. Um, at that time, those that, that choose to come will have a chance to meet our billing level administrators, all of our directors, and we have a packet of information that we go through. Uh, it's quite comprehensive, to be honest with you. There's a lot of paperwork to be filled out. Um, we do talk about duties and responsibilities of our substitutes. We talk about instruction, the importance of classroom management, uh, how to handle emergencies, and so on. Uh, so we look forward to meeting with those that wish to substitute teach here. And again, we intend to hold that on May 1st in Central Office. Next, we have New York State Assessments. So we've now entered the window for 3-8 testing, beginning with ELA computer-based testing on Wednesday, April 19th. Um, that window will, will run through uh, for us to get our two sessions in. Makeup window will begin on 424, April 24th, and run for approximately four days there as well. Uh, this year's ELA test is two sessions, and as it has been for years now, it is on time. Math CBT, meaning computer-based testing, will begin on May 2nd, with the makeup window beginning on May 5th. Again, that is also untimed, and there are two sessions that our students will take. That's the window for ELA and math testing. As we move further into May, I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about testing throughout the district. <clears throat> Just a brief overview of some upcoming year-end events, and uh, Michael did a wonderful job of speaking of those. Thank you, Michael. Uh, it was a great lead-in for me. So April 18th, we have the Goshen High School Variety Show, 7 o'clock at Goshen High School. And on the 24th, we have spring concert number one. So it's hard to believe that we're getting into concert season. Again, there are many more as we enter May. Uh, but spring concert number one, orchestra and band, 6 p.m. Goshen High School on the 24th. Followed by Goshen High School concert number two, 
on the 26th at Goshen High School, 7.30, and we featured a chorus that evening. Odyssey of the Mind, Dr. Coates uh, had briefly mentioned, we were very fortunate to have three teams represent the district at the Odyssey of the Mind Championships uh, at the fairgrounds in Syracuse. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing for the, for the second time. I mean, we have some state champions headed to the world championships. So congratulations goes to Miss Losey's team, um, the GIS team, who competed in problem number three, which is the Walls of Troy. Um, quite interesting, you know, essentially the children had to build their own Trojan horse and uh, get it over a barrier, through a barrier. So uh, they were quite creative, taking first place in the state. Very proud of them for that. Also, we had the combined GHS CJ Hooker team, coached by Mr. and Mrs. Seligman. The same problem, Trojan horse problem. Um, they did a wonderful job, very high score in the uh, 300s, uh, placing first in the state as well. So again, congratulations to our two champions. I also want to mention that we were fortunate to have that second GIS team, um, uniquely coached by some of our high school students. They did a wonderful job placing in the top 10. Um, their problem was a little different. Their problem was because I can, and they were tasked with creating a device that could complete simple tasks like raising a flagpole, ringing a bell, and so on. Um, they did a wonderful job, again, placing in the top 10. Um, in addition to that group um, of students doing a wonderful job, we had our, our group of high school coaches receive um, what I believe is referred to as the, the OMER Award or the OEMER Award, um, which is handed out for those that, that serve as um, great role models. And they serve as great role models through their actions and behaviors. So obviously those that um, take care of putting together the entire competition noticed that we had some high school students who were doing a wonderful job for other students in the district. And we're very proud of them for that. Just as OM has recognized them, um, you know, they, they did provide exemplary example, of great, just great behavior, great coaching, great leadership. So we're really proud of them. Now they will be going, the two teams that finished first will be going to Michigan State University in East Lansing to compete in the Worlds hopefully bringing home two world championships for us on May 24th through the 27th. And we will continue to work and try to partner with other districts to get all of our equipment and materials out there to East Lansing. Um, we do have two or three that we usually work with that also qualify quite frequently. So we'll be reaching out and trying to organize that. And we'll keep you informed for sure. And that is it for me this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carter. It's a good problem to have to try to coordinate that. It's not the first time. <laughs> Next on the agenda, um, I need a motion for the consent agenda. Billy and Tom. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the consent agenda as presented. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Next on the agenda, I need a motion for the second reading and readoption. Tom and Brett. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the second reading and readoption of the following policies. Response to intervention, number 7212, and homebound instruction, number 8450. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? I need a motion to approve last meeting's minutes. And Billy and Tom. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the minutes for the April 11th, 2023 regular board meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? I need a motion to adopt the proposed 2023-2024 school year budget and property tax report card. I have Billy and Shannon. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education adopts the budget for the 2023-2024 school year in the amount of $89,119,147. Be it further resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education adopts the property tax report card for the 2023-2024 school year as presented. I believe we need a roll call. Billy? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Tom? Yes. Brett? Yes. And yes. All those in favor? Obviously. Oh. Need a motion to approve overnight trip uh, for the track team to the pen. Uh, relay. Relay. Sorry. 
I am Shannon and Tom. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the overnight trip for the girls and boys track teams to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on April 26th to the 27th, 2023, and April 28th to the 29th, 2023, to participate in the Penn Relays at the University of Pennsylvania. Be it further resolved that the board reserves the right to cancel or reschedule any school sponsored trip or activity in the event of any emergency condition outside of the control of the school district in its sole discretion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We need a motion for 12.4 approved proposal to provide special education uh, legal services. I have Billy and Brett. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the proposal for special education legal services for the 2023-2024 school year from Thomas, Drohan, Waxman, Pettigrew, and Mill, LLP attorneys at law according to the following terms. Up to 90 hours per year, $15,300 annual retainer. Above 90 hours per year, $230 per hour for attorney services. 115 per hour for paralegal services, litigation services, 230 per hour for attorney services, and 115 per hour for paralegal services. Be it further resolved, the Board of Education authorizes the Superintendent of Schools to execute the proposal. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? We need a motion to approve budgetary transfers. Tom and Brett. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the board of education approves the following budgetary transfers over $25,000 for the month of March, 2023. Can I say as presented? Uh, all those in favor? Uh, opposed? We need a motion to revise the start time for the April 20th, 2023 uh, board meeting. And that's the one for BOCES. Uh, Shannon and Tom. Be it resolved, the Board of Education revises the start time of the 20, April 20th, 2023 board meeting related to the Orange Ulster BOCES budget vote and election from 6 p.m. to 7.15 a.m. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Does everybody need me to call them the day before? <laughs> uh, we do, do not have anyone signed up for privilege of the floor. Um, let's see, next on the agenda, board member issues, committee reports. Um, oh, thank you. Sorry, I need to add action seven. I need a motion uh, to approve an addendum to the district clerk, administri administrative assistant and records retention. Tom and Brett. Be it resolved that the board hereby authorizes its president to sign an addendum agreement dated April 17, 2023 to the district clerk, administrative assistant to the superintendent's terms and conditions of employment as presented to the board at this meeting. A copy of said agreement shall be incorporated by reference within the minutes of this meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. I even had it written down, Maureen. Sorry. Stated privilege of the floor, no one signed up, and then board member issues and committee reports. Um, the only thing that I have is that this Wednesday, I believe, is the policy committee meeting again, and we're meeting at 6 30. Tom, mm -hmm. can I ask also that we get a safety committee meeting plan? We now have more information on ordering of the radios, we should have more information coming from BOCES on the camera updates and the swipe system. So, if we could at least get something on the books to meet again. That way, it would allow us before the end of the year to have another community forum to wrap out the school year to talk about some of the improvements. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you're ready to talk about now, or you want to look at some dates and then figure out? Do you want me to just work with Maureen to send out an email chain yeah. with some possible dates? Are there days of the week that are better that we should stay close to? Our Wednesdays are Wednesdays. Wednesdays we we can do the other Wednesday policy. that's not policy, right? We're still doing every other. I usually have an <laughs> Oxbow meeting. But yeah, we, were talking the about, we were talking about a Monday night rotation for the building meetings. Right. So if we want to do a Monday night, maybe we keep it in that calendar. Mm -hmm. Mondays. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have to keep in mind the facilities. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, if you just give us a couple of, yeah, a couple of dates. And... Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other board member issues? Thank you. I need a motion to enter into an executive session. 
Tom and uh, Billy. Be it resolved, the Board of Education will enter into executive session with the intent not to regain the business portion of the meeting for discussions related to the employment history of a particular person or persons. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. 